back to step three of how to duplicate a fishing lure in CAD for 3D printing. Today we're going to finalize the lure to get it ready to be printed by adding hook hangers, weight pockets, the air chamber, and I will also show you how to do the stencils today. So the next step in this whole process is going to be to add the tie-ons and hook hangers. Some guys like to print their lures completely as one piece and they do that by standing it up on the tail usually and then they just use screw-ins. I don't like my layer lines running that way on the lure because it could probably easily snap in half at some point. So what I like to do is cut the lure in half and print it in two separate pieces. So that's how I'm going about it. If you want to do it the other way, knock yourself out. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the front plane. Just draw a rectangle around this. And then I'm going to do an extruded cut. Select the sketch. Make sure it cuts uh, all the way through the lure. And there you go. I got half a lure. At this point, I like to save it as a separate file because when I make the stencil later on, I'm going to have to remove everything I'm about to do anyway. So I highly recommend doing that. Uh, next step is going to be to turn on the side view. This is going to show us where our hook hangers need to be. So starting on the front plane, we're going to start a sketch. Now if you wanted to do a through wire, you could actually just draw draw a channel. The width would have to depend on the width of your wire doubled up. And then you could actually just extend this channel down here to the other hook hanger. And this would give you your actual channel where you could bend the wire to. I am not going to do a through hanger on this one. I am going to use uh, my pinned in hook hangers. So starting with a circle and at the rear. My hook hanger is about 0.18. I usually do about 0.20 to give me some leeway with all that melty plastic. So I draw two circles, and I know the dimension for me is 0.235 center to center. And I take a rectangle, draw the center portion, and that's about 0.10 for me. Just gonna put a five to keep that in place. And I basically I trim all this out. I can select this and just move it down where I want it. I always grab it by these so nothing else changes. And that's close enough. And while it's uh, still highlighted, I copy it with Control C and Control V, paste it. Just move that one down here. I'm going to center it up as best as I can. Scroll out a bit and then using the, under tools, it's going to be sketch tools and I am going to rotate the sketch. You just select what center point you want. Then I can just drag it. Looks pretty good. Just going to select it again. Move it down just a little bit. up here and paste another one and I'm going to do the same thing. Tools, sketch tools, rotate, select my point. You can also change it over here if you need precision. position it where it should go. I don't want this in the lip though, so I'm just going to go right at the edge. I need to be able to bend this later for when I'm tuning the lure to get it to run straight. So once that's done, you can uh, turn your side view back off. Find it. There it is. I think at this point I'm pretty much done with that view. side and I'm going to use an extrude cut. Select my sketch. I'm going to go about 0.03 deep. I've got to make sure it's into the body. Center that up and next 
thing I'm going to do, I'm going to select the flat side and start another sketch and using circles, centered on that, I'm going to do 0.08. These are going to be for the alignment pins. Helps keep the lure aligned when you're gluing it together and also pin holes to keep the hook hangers in place. And I'm going to extrude cut those. Fifteen should be plenty. Make sure it's not interfering in the back. It is so. I'm just going to do 0.125. That way my pins will be quarter inch. Plenty, plenty room to keep those in there. Okay, and then I'm just going to chamfer these edges just a tad. It just helps a little keep these edges clean when it's printing. Any little bit of elephant foot you get while you're printing. If your Z height's not right, this will help out a little bit. That way you don't have as much to clean up as your before you stick the hook hangers in. Okay, that's about it for the hook hangers. Next, we're going to add some weight pockets. And referring back to my unpainted blank, it looks like they're going to be quarter-inch uh, steel ball bearings. So for the first one up front, uh, I'm going to start a sketch on that plane and using a circle. I'm going to go 0.28. Looks like a little bit bigger. And I am just going to cut that in half off half of it and I'm going to do a revolve cut around that axis and that's going to be my first pocket. I'm going to start another sketch and using another circle I'm going to come down here. This one I'm going to make 0.30 just because it's, it's going to be a rattle chamber so this might take a little bit of trial and error but it's going to be up a little bit higher Try to make it. Trying to get a just normal extrude cut on this one. Try to do 25. See what happens. It might be a little close to the edge. Let's my check my section view here. edge a little bit, just a tad. And that's pretty good. Now I'm going to make a big old uh, air chamber at the top. And I start a sketch on this, and using this line I'm just going to offset that. So I'm going to do it into the body. That point 10 is good. I want enough room to be able to lay the glue in there, so I'm going to use point 10. I'm just going to make a big old chamber, trim those out, exit out of the sketch, and I am going to use an extruded cut, and I'm going to use an offset from surface, it's going to be this side, it's going to be reversed, translate to surface, I think about 0.08 should do. Actually, it's not going to be reversed. It's going to be normal. And there's the air chamber. I like that. I fill it to these just to get the printer an easier time rounding corners. And I 
think that's about does it. I think it's uh, ready to print. Just a couple more jampers. That's good. Now I'm just going to save this as the right side and then I'm going to mirror it. And to do that, I just go up to insert. Actually, I gotta select the front plane first, then go to insert and mirror part. Uh, it's gonna ask me if what I wanna do, which is solid body surface and whatever cosmetic threads is, I have no idea. Those are the defaults, so. And I forgot about that plane, or that uh, solid body, so what I'm gonna do is just hide that. And I'm going to save this as the left side. And once that's saved, I can actually go up to make an assembly from these two parts. And I'm just going to go in and insert both of these parts in. And that's what our finished lure is going to look like. Oh, eyebrows might be a little weird. I might clean those up before I actually print it, but for now it's pretty good so what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to make this float and I'm going to rotate it around the delta of Z so it's going to be 90 it's going to move that up here and I'm going to fix it again and then I'm going to make this one float and I'm going to use the make command this flat surface, that flat surface, flip it around, and then just align it up, or parallel, I'm just probably going to grab that surface, that surface, flip it around, these two faces that's it I am gonna save that as an STL and it's ready to print before I get into the actual stencil I'm gonna print one of these off just to make sure nothing needs changing before I get too far into things so we're gonna go do that and we'll be back okay and through the magic of editing here we are here's the first printed one compared to the original it's pretty close. I made a couple of errors here. You can see the, the inside air chamber actually came into the eye, and these are a little bit bigger. So what I did off camera to save some time is I made some changes and I printed a new one. I fixed the eye. I made these a little more defined, these a little smaller, and popped these out a little bit more. So it actually looks uh, closer to the original than the first copy. I think the lip angle's off a little bit, but I am not going to change that, but it'll work good enough. Another thing I was talking about before is you can see, hopefully you can see this where my body's more of an, a true ellipse compared to this, where it's it's more of a boxy, rectangle shape. So, like I said before, if you're just doing this for stencils, you're going to have to actually use a spline to create the body shape and get as close as you can. Maybe print one, change a few things before you get too crazy in it. But, for now... This is how it came out, and this is how it's going to be. I think I might insert these a little bit more into the body when I print the next one, just so they don't stick out as much, but this is where we're at. Uh, now that we're happy with what we have, we're going to get into the stencil. Okay, now that we're back in CAD, we are going to start the actual stencil finally. I am using the lure body I saved with no detail on the back, so that's what we're starting with. So basically we're going to be using a shell command to make the actual stencil off the body. And the shell command doesn't like fillets or anything fancy, so we're going to start by deleting all those. Uh, if you do it in SolidWorks, it'll actually uh, tell you what you can use and what you can't when you're done, if it throws an error. Basically, I'm going to leave these two because these are the top and bottom of the gill plate. 
but I know now if I did this it would probably just lock my computer up because uh, SolidWorks might look a little different because in the middle of this video I had to renew my license and it made me download the new version which doesn't work as well with my computer. I have a pretty good computer, I mean it's more of a gaming rig but it's still pretty good. Uh, basically I'm going to highlight all these and delete these. I'm just going to do yes to all. I'm also going to delete these details, eyes, any of the cut-ins and the eyebrows. I'm going to leave the sketches because I might use those later on. I missed this one somehow. Let me delete that too. I think pretty much everything else is good. Now, all this stuff up here, any of these curves and all these uh, weird angles and stuff will probably give it some problems too. So basically, I'm just going to start a sketch on the front plane and using a rectangle, I am going to chop the front of this off because I'm never going to use the, any stencils up front anyway, so depending on the lure you design, you might want to, so things might be a little different, but you'll have to play around and see what works and what doesn't. So basically, you're just going to do that into the body, cut the front off, and now we're actually ready to create the stencil, so we're going to go up the shell, and on this one, I'm going to select the back. I'm also going to select the front because I chopped it off and I don't want a flat surface there. I'm going to use a 0 0.06, I might have to change that later, and we're going to shell outward, so make sure that's checked, and I'm going to click the button. And there we go, there's my basic stencil that'll fit, fit the body. Now, next thing I'm going to do is, actually I'm going to do this from the back side. Uh, start another sketch on the front plane, and I'm going to take all these outside dimensions and I'm going to offset these away from the body. Uh, 0.10 is probably pretty good. And then I'm just going to start here. Gonna go down, create a line. Trim off that, trim off that. And then using convert entries, I'm going to convert the inside here. off and basically that sketch is going to get extruded. I'm just going to do point 0.1 and basically this will be where you can add your clips and all that. Actually I'm going to do point 0.8, I don't think it needs to be too thick. Okay now, what happened there? Next thing we're going to do is turn on our side view one last time. Starting on the back side. I'm going to start a sketch on the front plane. And I'm just going to draw some rectangles where the hook hangers are going to be. Just going to make sure. I'm going to adjust these once I flip it around. So that's a basic size I know I need. So back to this side. And I can actually come down a bit. And I'm just going to use another extrude cut. And those will basically just give me the reliefs for uh, my hook hangers. I can actually come back and adjust them a little bit. Should be good enough for now. You can always trim them out later. Just round these corners off. Just for aesthetics. I think I said that right finally. Okay, at this point I am going to save this as a blank stencil because I might want to do different uh, stencils for different uh, lures.
like if I'm doing a crop pattern or just stripes or anything. So let me do that and we'll be back. Okay, once we got it saved as a blank, we can, uh, we don't need our side view. That should be the last time we need our side view. I actually just want to come back to this side because I am going to need to adjust these again. I forgot about the thickness of the actual stencil part. Outs, but I mean the parts do stick out from the lure but it depends on how close the stencil is actually going to fit the lure so we'll see how it prints and then go from there now to actually make detail like say I wanted to cut out some lines for these to spray gill patterns I would actually have to turn on the sketch because I don't want to work off of this line because that's not actually where the gill is on the lure so I would just make sure I turn this on so I can see it. Which I offset first. So sketch offset. See if we do like a 0.03. And convert the entry. that in. And then I would just do an extruded cut. And make sure it's into the stencil. Basically that would give me a line to spray along the gill pattern if I wanted to. And you can see where I don't want to use the outside because when it creates the shell, it makes it thicker, so you always want to work off your original sketches. So I'm not going to use that. That was just an example. I think on this one, I am just going to do some uh, basic perch stripes. So I'm going to go to the front plane again, using splines. Just going to do some crazy Crazy stripes, I guess. Probably fast forward through this part in editing. Okay, so now that I'm done with that, basically the same thing. I am just going to do features, extrude, cut. Make sure my sketch is selected. stencil and there we go got some uh, crazy stripey patterns and if I don't like how they look you can just come back and edit your sketch so basically that's how you do it that's all I'm gonna do for now I'm not gonna get too crazy on this one one last thing I like to do before I actually save this is to scale it up just a tiny bit. So I go up to insert and features and scale. Uh, select the body. I like to use 1.02.03 just to make it a tad bit bigger. This is going to leave a little bit of room so it doesn't scratch any paint you put on there already or if you clear coat your lures before you start adding detail like this it just leaves room for that clear coat. So now that that's a little bit, now that that's done, I am gonna save this as an STL and shoot it over to the printer. And with again with the magic of editing, we'll be back with a printed stencil. So here we go. We have the finished stencil. It printed out surprisingly well, nice and clean. I did print this with full supports in here that snapped off uh, nice and easy, so that came out great. It fits the lure, almost perfect. Let's see if I can line it up here, one doing this on camera is a little hard. There will be two halves you'd print two and clamp them together clearly, but uh, the spray line will be nice and clean. I think it's going to work out uh, perfect. And when it comes to the, the bought lure, it will work. It's not a perfect fit. I can actually show it on the clear one a little better. 
or like if I lined it up perfect with the top, the bottom would be off a little, but I think it would uh, it would still be able to be used. I mean, the body shape is a little different. I mean, I could change it if I really wanted to, but I'm not going to because this would work for what I needed to do. But overall, that's how you make a stencil. That's how you make a lure. If you guys uh, find this useful and actually uh, make lures and stencils with it, hit me up. Let me know. Show me what you did. That would be great. Uh, show me that I'm not wasting my time making these videos. But anyway, I will probably do a part four that shows how to actually glue the lure together and go through that whole process again. Paint it up. Maybe show it fishing. I don't know. It's getting a little late in the season here for me, but we'll see what happens. But uh, I just want to say thanks again for watching, and I will uh, see you guys in the next video.